Howdy to you. It's a beautiful December day here in Indiana. I just wanted to take a minute to talk about some of the uh, something I don't see a lot on the internet these days. I don't see a lot on YouTube, but I do see a lot of people asking about on tractor forums and Facebook pages, and that's the different fuel types to be run in, especially some of these old unstyled tractors, like uh, like the ones you saw I pulled up on just a couple seconds ago. Uh, the different fuels, there's, uh, so you'll see a lot of different design features on these tractors, and that's really why I pulled them all up. I wanted to show some of these design features, what they are, what they do, what they're for, uh, and kind of explain a little bit about the different fuels. I don't want to go a lot into the different fuels, because I'm going to save that for a longer, more detailed video, but my plan here is to talk a little bit about gasoline, distillate, kerosene, all fuel, uh, tractor fuel, uh, tractor vaporizing oil, kind of all of those different things. But I'm, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on them in this video. I'm going to save that for a different video. The uh, the basis here, the, the, the big thing I want to cover is that uh, a lot of these tractors, you can see this John Deere B, for example, has a red cap. That's the gasoline tank right here. And then the green cap, that's the larger tank. You can see that takes up a lot of the underside of the hood is the uh, is the main fuel tank and the idea of that is that in your main fuel tank you burn one of those kerosene distillate tractor vaporizing oil paraffin oil things like that that have a lower volatility and just don't burn as well but that requires some extra design features to enable the use of those and I, th I hope this will help explain to some folks uh, why some of these design features are here what they're for, and the last thing I want to do at the end, toward the end of this video, is I'm going to run a couple of these tractors on the dyno, and not only am I going to measure horsepower, but I'm going to measure fuel consumption on a couple of different fuels, and kind of show, show, answer some of the questions that people have, which is, do I should I be running distillate in this tractor? Should I be running kerosene? Um, I know the answer, but I'm not going to give it quite yet because. You, know, you should watch to the end of the video and see the dyno results. So, one of the first features, I already pointed that out, that's the dual tanks. And you can see those are those end up being plumbed together and going to the carburetor. Uh, there's really nothing special about the carburetor on most all-fuel tractors. Uh, but what the carburetor bolts into, the manifold, uh, does ch tend to need to be special. This is one that's special. This is a distillate manifold, I believe. Um... It has, you can see there's a lot more area for the exhaust to flow around the intake runner and the idea of that is that lower volatility fuel also has less of a propensity to vaporize. So you want to preheat that intake air charge to some degree in order to preheat the fuel, in order to have the fuel vaporize better, mix with the air better, and produce extrude more of that power from that fuel than would have previously come out uh, if you didn't preheat that air. Uh, one of the other things that a lot of these tractors need to have that this one does, uh, not fully hooked up, but radiator shutters. So the idea here is to get the engine temperature warmer. You know, you start the engine on gasoline and then switch it over to tractor fuel. And you get the engine warm so that it, again, uh, vaporizes that lower volatility fuel better. And, uh, and that enables the tractor to run better on those. So what these do, there's... Uh, these still need a little bit of freeing up work. That's why they're not hooked up. Yeah. But there's uh, there's kind of flaps in each of these. You might be able to see them as a flap that you can control from the operator station. You can close it, and then there's a thermometer back at the back at the operator platform, so you can see what temperature you are running at and adjust your radiator shutters as needed. One of the other last features of a distillate tractor is the oil petcock. Here's the one on the John Deere B. And not only is that used on this tractor for checking the oil level, but one of the properties of distillate is it still doesn't vaporize and burn completely as well as one might hope. So you end up with a lot of cylinder washdown. You end up with a lot of that fuel in the oil, and that kind of harms the oil's property's ability to lubricate all of the uh, lubricate the tappets and the main bearings and the rod bearings and and to do its job 
Uh, similarly, because a lot of the videos I've seen have been pretty brand specific, I'm going to cover some of the features on a couple of the other tractors I have out here at the farm. This is a Farmall F14. Uh, it has not a lot of the distillate features. It seems to have had up in the sun. It seems to have had the hood changed out at some point, which would have had the gasoline starting tank on it, but has the large, you know, the the main fuel tank, which wouldn't have changed between a gasoline or a distillate tractor. But one of the things that would have changed here is the this is the distillate manifold. You can see this is a downdraft carburetor system, so there's the carburetor. And then here is a lever, and the function of that is to actually change a blend door that changes the amount of flow that goes across the intake runners from the exhaust so that you can modulate. So if you're running gasoline, you might not necessarily want to preheat the fuel because that might cause pinging, uh, might cause a loss of power from pre-detonation, pre-ignition, uh, and things of that nature. Uh, moving on to the 35F20. This is another one that has uh, it has the dual tank set up. Um, you can see the two the two fill areas. One, you know, there's uh, on these F series farmalls, uh, the F20s and F30s. The, disc, the gasoline tank is actually kind of sunk into the uh, main fuel tank. But you can see the two fuel lines coming together into the sediment bowl and then headed to the carburetor. Uh, what One of the things this tractor that all of the F-Series Farmalls have is similar to the John Deere's. They have the oil petcocks here. They actually have a few. You know, One is for checking oil level. The other is for draining off that distillate that settles to the top. But what this tractor seems to be missing, and this is pretty common, is the distillate manifold. My best guess is that this is a replacement manifold that's been put on here because the distillate one rusted out. And as you can see by the black soot mark right where the exhaust meets the manifold, this one's not far behind it. Uh, not a lot of other special features here on the farm wall. And then lastly, on the Alice Chalmers WC, um, kind of same story. There's the, there was the opportunity for a couple of different fuel tanks. You can see the hole for the gasoline starting tank there, but I do not actually possess one of those starting tanks. Uh, but it, it does have some of the other features that point to it having existed as a distillate tractor. Uh, for example, it does have the oil level petcock uh, to drain off the distillate that's going to come out of solution or come out of the power cylinder and settle down into the oil. But this tractor also has an oil dipstick for actually checking uh, uh, frame for actually checking the oil level. So there's a little bit of rundown of what some of the distillate parts are. Now let's go to the dyno videos. Um, just to show that dynamometer for a minute here, I've not hooked anything. This is just a pretty standard uh, tractor PTO dyno made by M&W Gear. Uh, really all it is is a big hydraulic pump that's driven by a, the PTO shaft. You can see the model number in the frame there. Uh, focus. Focus. Yeah, she's not going to do it. Well, basically all she is is a big hydraulic pump driven by the PTO shaft there that allows you to uh, pump that hydraulic fluid and then there's a big old valve to put a restriction on the pump and because pump pressure is a linear relationship to torque you can measure the pressure and at a given speed you can calculate the horsepower so that's what that unit does. regular gasoline showing the horsepower curve for this tractor, uh, which I learned a little bit about uh, my measurement method here. I was able to get more data points that you'll see when I get to the John Deere, but for this particular one, I'm just showing that uh, 500 to 550 PTO RPM, it's uh, right at about 25 horsepower, uh, which is just a tick above what the Nebraska test shows for that particular tractor. Uh, moving on to the horsepower versus the different, uh, different fuels. Uh, this kind of tells an interesting story. With uh, with this being not actually a distillate tractor, 
Uh, I think this is kind of what we expected. You know, the horsepower goes down just a little bit with the diff fillet and just a little bit more with the kerosene. So uh, I think that can be attributed to the poor atomization of the non-heat exchanging manifold and the carburetor that wasn't. A, I did no retuning of the carburetor during this test. So uh, opening the main fuel uh, delivery valve a little bit more would have probably bumped these horsepower back, horsepower numbers back up a little bit, but uh, I, did, I didn't have enough heat absorbing capability on the dyno, uh, heat rejecting capability on the dyno to continue this test for too long, so I kind of had to work with what I had. Um, looking at brake specific fuel consumption for that particular, uh, those same horsepowers, and measuring the mass of the fuel, um, I'm not going to get too far into brake specific fuel consumption in this video, I'm going to save that for the long one, but this is, uh, generally you want to have the, the number, the smaller the number the better, because this is measured in pounds of fuel per horsepower hour, so obviously burning less fuel is more efficient. Uh, in this case, it looked like the gasoline and the distillate were about the same at about a .45, which is actually pretty good for an antique tractor. Uh, you know, compare that to some of the you know, modern gasoline engines uh, still are in the about 0.4 region. And then uh, the, the kerosene is where that uh, nearly doubles. So I think this can also be attributed to the poor measurement method here that we'll, we'll be getting some improvements, so stay tuned for that. John Deere on the dyno. So this one, a uh, little bit better video in the background, a little bit better measurement. So looking at the horsepower curve on this guy, you can see that the uh, torque is pretty much a flat line from maybe 350 PTO RPM all the way out to about 550 uh, and then the horsepower curve comes up from there and just kind of peaks out at a little bit above what the Nebraska test showed uh, at about 22 horsepower um, at a higher RPM than the Nebraska test showed and uh, that Nebraska test was at about 525 PTO RPM which is right about where the torque really slopes off. Um, so that's, again, that's just the gasoline torque curve for this particular tractor. Uh, looking at the horsepower versus fuels on the John Deere, we actually kind of see the opposite story of what we saw in the Alice Chalmers. And I think that can be attributed to the higher power density that you get from a uh, from the distillate and from the kerosene fuel, uh, but could also be due to uh, maybe the carburetor was a little bit rich for the gasoline and was uh, burning the right amount of fuel for the kerosene and the distillate, and could be because of the heat exchanging manifold that the John Deere has to make it more capable to burn these fuels, seeing as it was designed to burn uh, heavier fuels and uh, distillates and things like that, whereas the John Deere was not. And lastly, on the brake specific fuel consumption for the John Deere, uh, this is kind of a mixed bag. I think, again, this is because of poor measurement method. Uh, but we're seeing about a about a 0 .65, 68 on the uh, on the gasoline, which is actually kind of high. That's kind of a lot of fuel to consume. Again, this could be because the carburetor could stand to be leaned out a little bit. Um, really weird story on the distillate where it goes up higher than even the kerosene. Uh, can't really explain that much more than just the uh, improvement needed in the measurement method. And then finally, the kerosene at about a 0.72, which is, if you remember, pretty similar to the Alice Chalmers results. So I hope to get another video out here soon, talking more about the, more about what distillate is, you know, getting more scientific about it, more in depth. Uh, and then hopefully early next year, I can get another video out, adding a couple of more tractors to this fuel consumption, uh, improving the capability and measurement method of the dyno and uh, giving you some better results there on uh, what, the fuel, what the fuel consumption looks like and what the power numbers look like burning some of these different fuels. So stick around and stay tuned. Uh, we'll be looking for more of those videos uh, early next year.